So these panels have been leaded with lead channeling and soldered up at the joints. And now the final process, or one of the final processes, is puttying each one of the panels to strengthen it and to waterproof it. So this is cement. This is a very messy and stinky process. This is linseed oil. And I just make a really tight paste. So all of this cement will get pushed under the leaves of the channels. And it sits for a good 48 hours to let it set and harden. And then the final process is cleaning it. So this is too loose for me. So I'm just going to add a little bit more cement to it to get it tighter. about the consistency that I'd like to see. Okay. So I'm just going to drizzle it. take a bristle brush and I push it underneath the leaves of the channel, the outside channel, all of the inside channel. This is going to give this lead superior strength and it will also be waterproof as well. So the elements will have a hard time getting through. However, not such a good idea for the Northeast because we have such extreme ranges of temperature in our climate that um, it really shouldn't be exposed to the elements. That's why there's a lot of restoration work being done on churches because there's been cracking and sagging. And so it looks like it's all underneath. Double check. add what's called whiting. There's many uses for whiting. They actually use whiting on sports fields to, to mark the boundaries and it's easy on the ground. Um, it, doesn't, um, it doesn't kill the grass. But it's also great for when you're puttying. It helps to accelerate the drying of the cement and sets it really well, thickens it even a little bit more. So I'm going to do the same thing with the whiting as I did with the cement. Just push it around underneath and it will start 
the curing process. I love the two-part putties instead of the ones that are already pre-mixed in a can. The putties that are pre-mixed in a can are already very, very dry. You have to add linseed oil to it to loosen it up, but you've got to be Superman to mix that up. So with my two-part putty, I can mix it up to whatever consistency I want. And uh, so I have control over over that and it's not nearly you don't have to struggle as much as what you do with a pre-mixed in a can okay so this looks pretty good well it really doesn't but I'm done as far as getting it all underneath the leaves and then once this is done which it will be in two seconds. Then I'm going to take a dowel and I'm going to clean up a little bit. So the excess I'm going to remove from the outside of the leaf all the way around each one of the design lines. Then push the excess away and onto the table. This is a real important piece of cleaning up on this because if I didn't clean this up really well, in two days it would be so dry and so hard that it would be nearly impossible to scrape this off the glass. So this part is really, really important to scrape as much of this putty off the glass as possible, especially when you've got textured glass. It makes it even tougher if there is, well, especially this one. This is highly textured. If I didn't get all of that putty off, I would be taking an X-Acto knife to scrape it out and it would it would be brutal. Right now it's soft enough, it's not dry. take a paper towel to get the rest of it off. So I've just got to be very careful not to go under, underneath the leaves of the lead because I want all the, the putty to stay underneath that. So when I use the dowel, I have to stay straight up and down and not go like this because I'll just dig out what's underneath the, the leaves. This is a pretty smelly process and typically I do all of my puttying outside if it was really nice. Even if it was cool, I would do it outside because the smell is a bit much and it lingers here for several days, about five days. Um, but it's too, this is winter here in Maine and it's too cold to do it outside. So, there we go. So in two days, 
Wednesday. So Friday, I will come back to these and start my final process, which is to remove any leftovers that are there. Probably would have to use something a little bit more sharp than a dowel. So that's why I'm trying to clean up as best as possible now. And then I will add a blackening. It's already fairly blackened just because of the process of puttying. So, but you can see the difference between the solder and the lead. So the lead is darkened really nicely, but the, the solder needs a little bit more help. And that I'll use what's called a black patina on that. And it's a solution that will darken all of the solder so it will look like the the um, the lead channels. It will also um, darken the lead channels as well. Make it look antique. And then that's the final process of this. And then it's ready to go into its its frame. Any questions, Phil? Um, any difference with um, ones that windows that you've done that have had a portion of original lead and a portion of new lead? Yep. Yep. Um, and you try. Um, especially with the chlorestories that I did, there was some original lead from that and some of the old lead. So you want to try always when you're doing restoration work to always match up as best as you possibly can the profile of the lead. So in this case, it was actually fairly easy because the original lead on these windows um, was 3 16 flat lead, which is what this is. So that's pretty common, and a lot of distributors, if not all of them, are still carrying 3 16 flat lead. Um, but you could, you could tell the difference between the two, the new and the old, just because it's new and the original is old. So it's weathered and it may have some dings to it, or it may be bent in certain sections. But um, there's nothing we can do about that unless we antique the new lead, which I doubt that I don't think really, a, unless it's a really, really sharp eye, you're gonna really be able to tell the difference between, between the two. Because once it gets patinaed, the blackening sort of blends in with the old lead and the new lead and looks pretty uniform. But these were all completely rebuilt using some of the original glass from um, the original window and some with a newer glass which is um, very, very close to um, what the original glass was. So all of this lead is the new lead. So 
Now, when you had to solder um, into some of the original lead, did you find that original lead to be any different composite wise? Oh, it's than... horrible. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so weathered and it's so old, you have to scrape down to new metal. So I take a Dremel tool with a carbide wheel and I scrape, there's, there would, it would be almost impossible to put fresh solder onto old lead unless you scrape down to new metal. Get to that nice clean part just underneath. So you scrape just enough so that you can make a really good contact. So um, I didn't even try to attempt it um, without doing that first because I knew it wasn't going to work. But once I got down to fresh metal, and you can tell because it's nice and shiny underneath, then I flux the heck out of it, put a lot of flux down, and um, have a, a fairly hot iron, enough so that it will melt the solder, but not hot enough that it's going to melt the lead. That's a little tricky, too. Just about. What, what was the most challenging pieces for you to, um, you know, either cut or work with? I would say um, it was the eyebrows. This, um, and I've had, I had to completely redo 11 of these. So, um, it was cutting these flourishes here and cutting these pieces here, which are very thin, and if you're not careful, you can break it right here. So I broke several of them as I was cutting them because they're really very, very thin. So I would say the pieces, um, this piece, this piece, um, a little bit with these pieces, not as much as this though. These were tough, and these pieces here. Other than that, it was really, um, it wasn't bad. Now, when you had to um, work with some of the original glass, did mm -hmm. you find that to be like more brittle or? Um, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Um, I try to use as much of the original glass as possible and um, even taking say this glass here, if this was the old piece, to make one these pieces here. Mm -hmm. So um, so I knew, because it was so old, that it was brittle, so I knew that I couldn't put as much pressure as I usually do on glass. But I've got to ease up on the pressure and just do enough pressure to score into that glass and then, and then cut it. So um, it was a bit challenging, but not as challenging as I had originally thought it was going to be once I started doing this. Okay, just a couple more areas. I think she looks pretty good. see what happened on the other side. Sometimes the putty comes out off on the other side. This side was already done before you came. So it's putty, but it still needs some cleanup. Now this piece here, Mm -hmm. This piece um, was already, it's a, an original piece and it was broken right there. I decided to leave the break um, and still use that piece because I like the color. <laughs> and um, I didn't want to put a piece of lead here because I don't like the way it looks. But I knew that when I puttied it, there was going to be enough cement that was going to get down between the two pieces and bond that really well. So if it was a really big break, like right here um, or here, that, that I would cut a whole new piece. But 
this is a small area and I wasn't concerned but I wanted to keep as much of the original glass as possible and sometimes that means keeping keeping a break in there because most antique windows you're going to find some stress cracks um, every now and then. I don't think that it is harmful to the panel and harmful to the integrity of the panel um, unless you've got bowing going on and that's a whole different story. But these, um, these windows are pretty strong so I think they're going to last at least another hundred years. So of the 11 eyebrows you've had to re redo, mm -hmm. uh, how many do you have to go now? How many I left? have three more. Three more. I have three more, yeah. which you'll be filming. <laughs> <laughs> so um, these, these were the, um, the half rounds near the uh, near the eyebrows, and then the thin clerestory um, at the top with all the other clerestory windows. So those that that completes it. Yeah. And because um, there was one original of, of yeah. these and one original exactly. of these. Exactly. Yeah. So there was only two each of those. Um, so I was able to get those done this month. And um, yeah, the, these go. The ends of the narcissus are numbered, and so the smoking compartment is considered the number one end. Which and these would be these are over the number two end on the okay. number two end. Because the, the smoking compartment takes up one double. Passenger window set, which okay. is one eyebrow. Yeah. So one final swipe with the paper towel, and then these are ready to rest. Nice. The whining also gives it a nice little shine too. So there, there are like 50 individual panes of glass in each one of those <laughs> or 50? so. There's 50 in here? That I just was just doing a quick count. There's like 50 individual. There's 50? There's about 50. Oh my God. You know, I never counted. <laughs> wow, really? I guess, I guess maybe. I mean, I was just doing a quick count while wow. you were cleaning up. So I wonder it took but, me so long to count all this glass. <laughs> Okay, this is ready to go into the hallway. I'm
This one is small enough that I'm going to wait to do all the picking that I've been doing, especially on the big one. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to flip it over and do the other side, and then I'll start my cleanup uh, both sides at the same time. Now the the glass that you did have to purchase. Yep. Um, was one. it was it uh, from more than one manufacturer? Um, yes. So. Do, do you find that the glass is different as far as working with it, depending on the manufacturer? Um. That could be a yes and a no, a no question. Um, it all depends on how highly textured and how thick the glass is. So this glass here, for instance, this is the newest Kokomo glass. You can see the difference between the two, actually. According to Kokomo, this is the same glass, but they mixed it up differently so that you see a lot of beige and dark amber you see some of the original blue here. That just happened to be from this particular piece, but they got it more uniform to this color, but it's still the same glass. Um, this is a thicker glass, very difficult to cut. Uh, I'm gonna be real careful cutting it. Um, this is the newer glass that's supposed to match the original, which is here. This was a lot easier to cut just minor pressure and it was able to cut mm -hmm. easily. Um, the circles were more difficult to mm. do. I forgot which side I was... Oops, sorry. So I find that uh, when they're working with the old metal, like on the frame and uh, truck, okay. truck work yep. is that back, you know, during the early 1900s, late 1800s, the met, the big pieces of metal were all forged, hand forged, oh, or, wow. you know, with big equipment. And, and so the mixture of metal uh, isn't as uniform necessarily okay. as today's. Yep. And so for welding or cutting with a torch or something, it, it can be really challenging right. to work with it. I think I'm a pretty good glass cutter, so it wasn't really that challenging for me. Um, there is a learning curve. Um, when you're cutting into old glass, you've got to know that there's, um, you can't put as much pressure on it, so I found that out um, very, very soon. Um, some you can get away with, but um, the beige glass, uh, the original beige glass, is actually a thinner glass than um, the newer beige glass that I purchased um, through Wismark um, Glass Company, which is one of the oldest glass companies around, along with Kokomo. So I knew that if I was going to find this glass, it was going to be one of those two places, and it sure was. Hmm.
don't know if you can see this. I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up. But this is the original glass here, which is thinner. And this is the newer glass, which is thicker. And it's actually raised up just ever so slightly from this piece here. So the, the channel is sitting. Um, there's not as much space in this channel on this piece mm -hmm. as there is in this piece. <laughs> And that's what made the glass more brittle because of the thinness of it. And that's the original that is, this is more this. thin. Yep. Yeah. Yep. This is this is this is this is these two are and that is. All of this is mm -hmm. the new glass. not a crack. It's just a seed in mm -hmm. this glass. This is actually a dental pick. <laughs> <laughs> it work, works perfect for this though. I hate the sound of it though. So like on the one you're working on now, the mm -hmm. original one, mm -hmm. what, what type of things would you have to do to that? How do you mean? I mean, just you just look it over and maybe add some putty or, you know, just to see if anything is, everything is okay with it or? You mean F? On the original, the original oh, piece. Oh, 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 on the original one. Yeah. Um, the original one had some breaks in, um, in the lid. So um, it was actually in pretty good shape. Um, and I still have to do, I noticed um, that, in fact, I've got it here. It's in pretty good shape. This is the original one. And I have to solder, it's, it's not that bad, mm -hmm. so I'll just scrape it down to metal and just put a little bit of solder here. There's a little tiny bit of movement, but that's it. That's all, I mean, everything looks really good, but there's still tons of putty in here. Yeah. It's, it's very strong, nice. very strong, yeah. So there wasn't much I needed to do with this at all. Just that and... And it's done. Is that the same with the, this other piece? Um, the other piece, um, no, there were more 
there was more work done on that. Um, um, I'll be putting some blackening. And this is what I mean by where there's a crack and there was a repair mm -hmm. in here. So there was repair there, and then there was a repair on another one. Um, but you can tell the age of this lead. So this is the this is the new lead, and this is the old lead. You can see how it sort of ruffled up a little bit. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, it's it's still strong. There's still putty in there, and it, it's it's really really solid. Um, so I'm not concerned about that at, at all. But just a difference. You can see just the difference in. Um, in the lead. But obviously there's no putty on this one which will blacken it up and also I'll put that patina on it and get it to as close to this color yeah. um, as possible. But you can see there's a little mild crack mm -hmm. right there. That's nothing. Um, that's okay and it looks like there's actually some putty in there. Um, but I'm not crazy about that but I'm gonna leave it because mm -hmm. um, there's no sense in, in, well, right, in taking right. it out. It's not a beauty yeah. pageant. No, <laughs> yeah. it's not. And that's part of the original, yeah. I mean, a fix at some point yeah. in the car. At some so, point, at yeah. some point, yeah, yeah. for sure. Because the car was in at least one accident, maybe a couple oh, of accidents. Oh, is that so? So, you know, so I'm sure they had to do some, you know, glass work. Right. know so much about this that you can build windows yourself. <laughs> uh, no thanks. <laughs> the hardest part, I think, was making sure that we get the glass to be as close to what the original glass was. And um, so I think we did a a pretty oh, good yeah. job with that. Yeah. Well, to find the same manufacturer right. you know, was huge. Right. Well, there's 40 windows in all. Right. And for the clear story, some of the glass came out of the Arbutus. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a few of the Arbutus clear story windows, so 